Now, since most of you are familiar with the panel board, um, let's take a look at how a switchboard compares to a panel board with just kind of an overall large overhead view. The load center is considered a general duty panel board. An NQ, an NF, and an I line, we would consider a heavy duty panel board. Notice the voltages go up when you go from a load center to a panel board. And then just think of a, a switchboard as just a really heavy duty panel board. So the, the voltage is the same as the UL67 panel board, but you'll notice that the amperage goes up to as high as 5,000 amps. Uh, switchboards are only indoor or outdoor. They're much, much larger. But again, you'll notice that load centers, panel boards, and switchboards are all used in the exact same application. It just depends on what the customer needs. So from there, we'll look at a comparison of panel board to a switchboard. First, we'll notice that the panel board has a UL67 standard that dictates how we as a manufacturer build them. We also have to adhere to the NEMA standards, and the NEMA standard for a panel board is called PB1. Switchboards, on the other hand, have a totally different standard. That's why they look different. That's why they're built different. Uh, that standard is UL891. On a panel board side, commercial, industrial, residential, same thing on the switchboard side. Every application that you can use a panel board, you can use a switchboard. Panel boards, however, are wall mounted. They do not stand on their own and cannot be, be mounted individually. They must be mounted to a wall. Switchboards, however, can be standing on a pad or freestanding in a room. Where a panel board is worked on only from the front, a switchboard can be built with complete access all the way around. So every side, front and rear, can have access. Panel boards, we take an interior with the bus bars and the breakers, and we mount it inside of a cabinet that is bolted to the wall. In a switchboard, you'll usually have sections. There'll usually be one with the main breaker, for example, in one section, and then that section will feed several other distribution sections. The panel board will not have a utility CT compartment. In other words, that panel, bo panel boards cannot have the meter installed in them with the current transformers from the utility. However, a switchboard typically is where the utility places its metering and its current transformers to meter the customer. The panel board is sold two ways, either factory assembled, completely all breakers installed, any modifications uh, done at the factory, or it is sold as a stock item, RTI, ready to install through a distributor stock with catalog numbers. Switchboards, on the other hand, are, are always built at the factory, and most all of the time, they'll fit either two criteria. One is a standard design for a quick turnaround, a quick ship program, or they'll be custom built to anything that the customer needs. Panel boards, any type of atmosphere, any type of environment, because they're typically located close to the loads. They're in the factory, in the mills, they're out in the environment, so the enclosures protect them against the environment. Switchboards, on the other hand, are usually in a utility, a electrical closet. They are usually locked up behind some kind of a door for authorized personnel only. Therefore, the, uh, they only come in an indoor and an outdoor version. On the panel board side, we want one panel board connected to a second panel board. There is no way to bus continuously from one panel board to the other. The contractor does it with cable and conduit. Switchboards, on the other hand, we splice sections together. So you have a continuous through bus running down the middle, and it connects sections together without any cable or conduit. In a panel board, the main breaker is usually vertically mounted or will use a back-fed branch, and it is part of the branch breakers itself. Again, in a switchboard, you can have either individually mounted devices, IMD, group mounted devices. They can be back-fed, or we can use what's called a draw-out breaker. The largest panel board we make is 1,200 amp. The largest switchboard we make is 5,000 amp UL listed. However, they have been made up as high as 10,000 amps. 
The vertical bus, uh, largest vertical bus, largest breaker you can put in I-Line, for example, is 1,200 amps. In switchboards, the uh, vertical bus can be rated up to 3,000 amps, so larger branches can be put in switchboards. Uh, fusible, we only have the limit of the 800 amp and the 1,200 amp for switches. In a switchboard, we have a 4,000 amp fusible switch called a BP, bolted pressure switch. The breakers used in panel boards are your standard thermal mag or electronic trip breakers. The exact same breakers can be used in switchboards also. And the voltages are very similar except that the DC rating that a panel board carries, for example, in Q, uh, does not follow over to the switchboards. They must be uh, ordered as a special item if you need a DC rating on a switchboard. So looking at the characteristics, it basically does the same thing as a panel board. However, it has greater capacity, larger amperage. It can do additional functions like providing place for the utility metering to be installed in the switchboard. Applications are identical, large, medium, small applications. The four main purposes of the switchboard is, number one, to distribute power to the branches and feeders to provide overcurrent protection for the wire in the wall, to provide a disconnecting means for the building, and last but not least, the reason we put a fence around it in the first place is to protect people from exposure to live parts.